So last week I reviewed a Terpra Real Force keyboard and this was necessary for me to get a more solid base of knowledge for myself and for you guys because the board we have today is another rubber cup keyboard and is the Royal Kludge RC930. Thanks to Banggood.com for providing me with this keyboard to show you guys. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. The box is quite simple on the front which is quite reminiscent of the Real Force boxes as well as the image of the keyboard. And as we can see, just like the Topa board, this is an electrostatic capacitive switch keyboard using clone Topress key switches. And on the back, there's a slab of info, which is all in Chinese, but also a cool little label diagram of the switch. Opening up the box, we have the keyboard itself, and then just this small warranty card, and that's it. And here is the keyboard. First impressions on how it feels in the hands is pretty standard for solid mechanical keyboards. The design is very simple and conventional, with a simple rounded rectangular shape. The corners and edges are quite rounded and gives it a more softer look rather than angular. This only comes in black, which fits any setup, and has a bit of a rough texture to the surface. And it really is clear that it is textured just by looking at it, especially in the light on the right angle. It even looks to sparkle a little bit. So a bit odd, but it also doesn't show any fingerprints and stuff, but dust is really clear. This is a 10 keyless keyboard, so it has 87 keys and can be more ergonomic in bringing your mouse closer to the center. If you need the numpad, then it also comes in full size. And this is a completely standard ANSI layout with standard size keycaps. The keycaps reflect the more standard black plastic texture which is a bit smoother and perhaps that would have been a better finish for the rest of the case in my opinion. And unfortunately the typeface on these keycaps lets down the whole look of the keyboard in my opinion, although your taste may vary. This is quite a high end keyboard with a high price meant for typists. Nowhere does it mention that it's a gaming keyboard, so I don't see a reason to have a gamer font, but rather it should be a more professional look. But again, this is just the general consensus, and you may like it. Turning the keyboard over, there are four flat rubber pads for non-slip, and two flip-up feet, which are also nicely rubber tipped. There is a cable routing channel with five openings, and unfortunately this is a non-detachable cable. And hidden away is a tiny switch which enables you to lock it from programming it. Plugging in the keyboard, it lights up, which is a cool feature that isn't on the current Topra models but are on the upcoming ones. They say that it's an RGB keyboard. While technically it is, the color range is really poor. The lighting can be controlled on board and is done via the function key at the bottom. The arrow keys control the brightness and effect speed. The lighting is controlled in zones, and keys 1 to 4 control those zones. So 1 is WASD, 2 are the arrow keys, 3 is the function row and nav cluster, and then 4 is the rest of it. 5 is breathing mode, 6 is for day night modes, 7 is the RGB breathing mode, and then 8 goes through all the singular color modes. So the colors. There are only 7 colors that you can change to, this may be a disappointment if you expected a better color spectrum, which RGB does suggest, but on the other hand, it's not just one singular color, so you do have some choice. I think my biggest gripe though is that the white, if you can call it white, has quite a strong tinge of blue. Like usually with RGB boards, the white will have a blue tinge, but this isn't white really. I myself prefer white backlighting and I'm sure many others do as well as it's more clean and just matches anything. The keyboard does have software though, where you can also control the lighting, but it doesn't really offer anything extra with the colors. It does bring up a nice color palette, but it just goes to the closest color, so there's really no point. Although the rest of this software is a really nice bonus, we can program any key over two layers via the function key, so you can record macros or just assign a key as dedicated MIDI keys or whatever, so this is an awesome feature that's useful for anything really. There's games of course, but for professional work as well, it can really up your productivity and efficiency. Taking off the keycaps, we can see the key switches. These are clones of the Topra electrostatic capacitive key switches and are not mechanical. It consists of a house slider which goes over a rubber dome and within that is a conical spring. 
So when it's depressed, it compresses that conical spring, which then activates that electrostatic layer and actuates the key. So it seems a bit complicated, but it isn't, because it's just the rubber dome keyboard, but combines a few other technologies to make it more superior. However, since it's using the conical spring, the actuation point is around the middle rather than the bottom like on a conventional rubber dome keyboard. So you don't need a bottom out, but it's hard not to. The key switches I have are 55 grams, but you can also get them in 45. The really really cool thing though is that it uses Cherry MX keycap compatible stems. One of the biggest downsides of Topra boards is that you have an extremely limited choice of aftermarket keycaps to customize your look. Like the Cooler Master Nova Touch and many clones, these sliders allow you to buy and use whatever Cherry MX keycaps you want, and with the circle stem they are also compatible with Topra keycaps. The typing experience is really cool and I absolutely love it. The experience is much different from conventional mechanical key switches like Cherry MX, but also different from conventional rubber domes. I found that the stock Topra experience was great, but not amazing and not to my personal liking, and not too too far from nice rubber dome keyboards, so I really do find this quite unique. Even though these are clones, they don't exactly represent the Topra experience. The tactile bump is a touch weaker and less crisp. If you slowly press one key, it's pretty much linear, but with increasing resistance. The tactile bump is noticeable when typing though, but it's not as distinct as Topra in my opinion, or as sharp as like Cherry MX Browns. I also feel that these are just a touch more rough and not as smooth, but it wasn't for all the keys. Some keys feel very smooth like the original Topra, but others felt quite scratchy. But when you're typing and combine those two characteristics, the scratchy nature does stand out a bit more. When you bottom out, it has a bit of a cushion. This is helped by the fact that it's just a rubber dome, but bottoming out isn't as solid or as deep as the original Topra's and loses a bit of that famous thock feeling. The upstroke is where it differs more. This keyboard is silenced by having O-rings or also known as dental banding and are on the base of the stem which we'll look at later. What this does is reduce the sound of when the keys return to the top. That's where most of the sound occurs on these keyboards and on the original Topra boards. And it does work in dampening the higher pitch sounds. And this impacts on how the typing feels as a whole as well. I personally found it more enjoyable than stock Topra as it produces a more unique dampened experience and it's difficult to explain but because you hear the rubber a bit more you kind of feel the rubber a bit more. And here's a quick sound test.
The keycaps are made of ABS plastic and are quite thin, but standard enough for stock keycaps. And these are double shot, meaning that the legend, which is clear, is a different piece of plastic to the rest of the black keycap. So there won't be any issues with fading over time like on cheaper backlit keycaps which are just painted over and laser etched. Opening up the keyboard is simple enough, there's no screws and it's held in by clips which is somewhat similar to the RealForce keyboards. And also just don't use a metal ruler like me as it can cause damage. We have the top plastic shell which looks pretty standard and the plastic bottom shell is quite thin and features no ribbing on the bottom for reinforcement. The steel backplate is painted black and is about 1.5mm thick, with folds at the front and at the back. The PCB doesn't look like a standard mechanical keyboard, as there's no physical key switches that go through it, but to open it up further there's a couple of Phillips head screws to remove. There are three through hole LEDs for the lock indicators which hold the rubber cup sheet stuck, and I did make quite a mess but basically these are the rubber domes which determine the weight of the key press, which is 55 grams in this case. And then there's the conical spring which doesn't determine the weight like on conventional mechanical key switches and offer hardly any resistance at all. But I did end up removing those LEDs because they're useless and it will make this assembly easier later on if I want to. Another cool thing is that since it uses Cherry MX sliders, we can remove these by simply taking off the keycaps. These then can be used on other Topra boards which in the end is an expensive ordeal but an option nonetheless. And we can also see the rubber rings which dampen the upstroke. They're quite thin actually and these can be removed if you wish to do so. So overall I found it to be one of my favourite factory typing experience yet. The typing experience is quite a bit different to mechanical keyboards and even to stock Topra. I have felt other silenced Topra boards but usually they've been lubed as well so it didn't feel as good to me but still great. But just to make it clear, I did personally prefer the feeling of this to the stock real force, but the typing experience doesn't feel as premium and as solid. But yeah, I think this would really benefit from a bit of lube to make the action more smooth and also to dampen it a bit more. The build is pretty standard for mechanical keyboards with the plastic shell and metal backplate, so I'd expect it to last for a long time. It's not as hefty as the originals and not as premium feeling, and I do like the look of the keyboard, but the font on the keycaps does let down the overall aesthetic of the keyboard, especially since it isn't marketed as a gaming keyboard. And for the price, I expect it to be more professional looking like the rest of the keyboard. The lighting also may be a bit of a letdown if you expected a more standard RGB color range, which is fair, but it still does offer the ability to change colors, albeit out of seven colors. I think my biggest gripe with the colours is that there's not a good white, but that's just personal preference. And the other massive feature is that it has Cherry MX compatible key stems, which is one of the downsides of Topra boards, so you can chuck on whatever aftermarket keycaps you want. The price though is still quite high since it's an electrostatic capacitive keyboard, but at the same time it's quite a bit cheaper than keyboards with legitimate Topra switches. So if you want Topra or you want to try it but can't afford it, then this may be an option. However, if you can afford to go just that bit further, then perhaps it would be better to save a bit more and go for a RealForce, Leopold or HHKB or something. It just depends on your situation. Thanks again to Banggood.com for providing me with this keyboard to show you guys. Again, it's a website known to most since it's worldwide. And if you want to check out the keyboard, I'll leave a link in the description.